on this one. So it says the difference between an integer and its square root is 12. What is the integer? Okay, so what did y'all come up with for number one? Okay, did y'all come up with your equation? No. Okay, so let's think through this equation. When I say an unknown integer, what variable am I going to use? X. Okay. When I say the word difference, what does that mean? Subtract. When I say it's square root, what does that mean? Square root of X. And I'm going to set all of that equal to what? 12. 12, because they tell me that it's going to be 12 right here. Okay. We have to solve for the, this is just like what we've been doing for the past like two-ish weeks where we're trying to solve for x. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract x from both sides. And that's going to give me negative square root of x equals 12 minus x. Now, I still want to isolate that radical and it's attached to that negative sign, right? So I'm going to divide by a negative 1 on both sides. And that's going to give me the square root of x equals the negative 12 plus x. So my second step is going to be to square both sides, right? Well, when I square both sides, what I'm going to get is x is equal to negative 12 plus x times negative 12 plus x. When I multiply that out, I'm going to get x squared minus 24x plus 144. So where I got that from is by taking this stuff right here and multiplying it by itself. And I did negative 12 times negative 12. That got me 144. x times x gives me x squared. Negative 12 times x. x times negative 12. If I add those together, I get negative 24. Okay? So now I'm still wanting to get this in standard form so that I can factor this. And that's going to give me x squared minus 25x plus 144. Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to factor this. So we're going to say a times c, that gives me 144. b is going to give me 100, or negative 25. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm trying to figure out what factors of 144 will add together to give me negative 25. Everybody comes up with 12 times 12 and then can't think of anything else. If you can't think of anything else, you're going to enter into that y equals button and you're going to type 144 divided by x and that'll pull up after you hit second graph. You go into that table and you can see all of your factors. When you look those up, you're going to get negative 16 and negative 9 as factors of 144. Okay? So x is going to equal 9, and x can also equal 16. Now our fourth step is to check. So we're going to take both of these, and we're going to plug them back into the original problem. So when I check, I'm going to take 9, and I'm going to plug it back in for x. 9 minus the square root of 9 is going to give me 6. 6 can't equal 12, so that's not going to work. I'm going to take 16, plug it in here. 16 minus the square root of 16, so 16 minus 4, does give me 12. So my final answer is going to be 16. So on number 2, it says the sum of an integer and twice its square root is 24. So an integer is x plus twice the square root of that equals 24. Okay, so this is how you set up that equation. Now, you want to isolate that radical. So you're going to subtract x from both sides. And that's going to give me 2 square root of x equals 24 minus x. We still want to get that square root by itself, and it's attached to that 2. So in order to get rid of that 2, you're going to divide by 2 on both sides. And that's going to give me the square root of x equals 12 minus 1 half x. So I'm going to square both sides in order to get rid of that square root. So I'm going to get x 
equals, and if I multiply this mess out, I'm going to get one-fourth x squared minus 12x plus 144, okay? For those of you who need some help on that, so if I take 12 minus one-half x and I multiply it by itself, <laughs> What's going to happen is 12 times 12 gives me that 144. 12 times negative 1 half x gives me negative 6x. Negative 1 half x times 12 is going to give me negative 6x. And negative 1 half times negative 1 half is going to be positive 1 fourth x squared. Okay? And then I just rearranged and combined my like terms to get this number down here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that x to the other side. It's not 64. Let's solve this. You can multiply by a 4 all the way through to get rid of that 1 fourth. However, if you want to just go ahead and find your factors, your 1 fourth times 144 is going to be 36. And your B term is going to be negative 13. What two numbers will make that happen? Hmm? Negative 9 and negative 4? Uh, yep. Okay. But the only issue with this is watch. Now I have to actually do the box method or I have to do the slip and slide method because your A term is 1 fourth, right? So here's my suggestion to you. Make your life easier and multiply by 4 all the way through. Multiply by 4 all the way through so that you get rid of that 1 fourth. So if I have 1 fourth chilling up here in the front, the way to get rid of that is to multiply by 4. It's like multiplying by your reciprocal, right? Multiply by 3. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, once I multiply all of this out, I'm going to get x squared minus 52x plus 576. And so now I'm going to think of factors of 576. Now I know you can't think of those factors off the top of your head. I'm going to tell you that after you would plug that into your calculator, you would notice that one of your factors is going to be 16 and the other is going to be 36, okay? So x is going to be 16, or it's going to be 36, okay? We're going to take both of these, and we're going to plug them back into the equation. If we do that, we're going to realize that 16 is the only one that works. Okay, so I know a couple of y'all are still struggling with this solving, um, and on your test, there's going to be solving problems. And there's going to be more of those than probably anything. So I want to make sure that we're good on this before we move on to like the next topic. So on 57, we're trying to solve for S. We're trying to get S by itself. So what we're going to do is first we would isolate the radical. Fortunately for us, the radical is already isolated. We're going to square both sides. Okay, we're going to square both sides. So that's going to give me r squared equals s over 2 pi. Now, we're still trying to get s by itself. So we're going to multiply by 2 pi on both sides. Yep. Okay. And so that's going to give us 2 pi r squared is s. All right, so the first thing that you probably did was you squared both sides, right? Yeah. Okay, so once you squared both sides, you got r squared equals 3v over 4 pi. Now, we still want to get v by itself, so we're going to multiply by 4 pi on both sides. I'm going to multiply by 4 pi on both sides. These are going to cancel. I'm going to get 3v equals 4 pi r squared. But we need our v by itself. So we're going to divide by 3. And v is going to be equal to 4 pi 
R squared over wow. three. Oh, All right, so on 59, what's going to happen is you're trying to get B by itself. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to square both sides, and that's going to give you R squared equals 2V over pi times H. Now, still going to get B by itself, so I'm going to multiply by pi times H on both sides. So that's going to give me pi H on this side, pi H on this side. These will cancel out. I'm going to get 2v equals pi h r squared. Now I'm still trying to get v by itself, so I'm going to divide by 2. And v equals pi r, oh, pi h r squared over 2. All right, so now we're trying to get H by itself. So we're going to square both sides. And that's going to give me R squared equals 2V over pi times H. Now, we're trying to get H by itself. So that means I'm going to take H, which is in the denominator, and I'm going to multiply it by H on both sides to move it to the numerator. So, just H. And that's going to give me h r squared equals 2b over pi. Still want to get h by itself, so I'm going to divide by r squared on both sides. This will cancel. h is equal to 2b over pi r squared. You're on the back of page four. It's talking about a pendulum. Okay, so that's basically like when you have a clock and you have the little like string with like a ball in the end and it's going like back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's actually counting the number of seconds and the minutes and the hours, etc. Okay, so they give you a formula on your paper. That says t equals 2 pi, the square root of L over G, right? And they also tell you the information that G is equal to 10 meters per second squared. Really, if you were in your physics class, it would be 9.8 meters per second squared, but here we are, okay? So then they say that L is the length of the pendulum, right? So on 63... They tell us that the length of the pendulum is going to be 0.9 meters, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in to this equation, and that's going to give me 0.9 over 10 in the denominator. So when I plug that into my calculator, and you really need to practice plugging this in, you're going to get 1.88 seconds. If you didn't get 1.88 seconds, then you might have typed something wrong. 